Today I'm excited just to speak to, to you all just about what the Lord's been doing in my heart concerning the power of the gospel. Um, probably for the last year and a half, two years, I've just been on this journey of being hungry for what the Bible truly exhibits, especially in the New Testament. Um, I've been on the mission field for about eight years now, and largely in the realm of discipleship and evangelism. I just burn for evangelism, and I'm hungry to see what the disciples saw in the New Testament, um, to where you see the power of God moving upon uh, the culture, the people, and, and you're seeing churches planted, expansion. You're seeing the gospel go out it, at an exponential rate, and and I'm hungry to see that in our own ministries, our own lives. And so I was challenged by the Lord to go back to the New Testament, to, to the book of Acts, to the early church, and see uh, what the disciples were doing, what they were preaching, how the message of the gospel influenced them. And that message of the gospel is just our interaction uh, with Jesus Christ, with the story of God to man, and the good news that, that Jesus came to transform us, to give us new life and to save our souls, bring us into reconciliation and right standing with the Father. And so I started going back in the book of Acts, and I went to each place in the book of Acts that talked about, um, well, that was, that was the disciples having an opportunity to preach the gospel. And there's multiple settings in there. And I, I just thought, I want to know what they were saying, because their results, I want, I want their results. And, um, so I began with the, the first one is actually in Acts chapter 2 on the day of Pentecost. It's one of the most exhaustive ones, and Peter stands up and, and he, talks about, um, he talks about the gospel. And what I found is the way that he displayed the gospel was not how I had been displaying the gospel, how I had been portraying it and speaking it. And it challenged me because in our day and age, there's just this tendency to want to make the gospel relevant and wanting to make it into persuasive words and all of that. And I was challenged by the New Testament, by the book of Acts, by the apostles to get back to the basics of the gospel and trust the power of the gospel. And so I looked at what Peter preached in that first message, and it was so straight. Um, in a way, some of the things would have actually been offensive in how we receive the gospel these days. He, he went at the issue of rejection of Christ, our accountability to, to sin, and um, what, what our interaction was with putting Jesus on the cross. He, he talked about um, God validating Jesus as who he was, um, and that Jesus came and that he, he died, he was buried, and he was resurrected. And what was amazing to me is, is also all of this was made possible First of all, through the open door of the movement of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit working together with the pure gospel erupted into this dynamic um, instance where 3,000 people were saved in one day. At the end of this gospel, like Peter didn't even get to the end of this gospel before the crowd actually stopped him. And the crowd began to ask him and all the other apostles they're, they're like, what must we do? You've given us this information, and, and it's cutting us to our heart. We know the truth of it. What do we need to do? And Peter looked at them. This is in Acts chapter 2, I believe, verse 38 or so, 36, 38. And, and he says three things that are just absolute. They, they seem like the most basic things for us, and I think that we've kind of trivialized them or minimized them, but he said, he said, um, repent and be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And so I went through this journey of even looking at those three things, and it just brought life to me. And I thought, man, what we have done is we've taken the gospel and the very first fundamental foundational things of the gospel, and we've actually made them into like a years long process. I, I, I recognized in my own life that I had taken out the faith to know that just the words of the gospel, the moving of the Holy Spirit to bring glory to Jesus through the gospel, um, that I had actually minimized the power of that. Throughout the, the last year to two years, 
just God has been reviving and producing this faith in my heart toward the gospel. That, um, that it is the power of God to, to transform a life. So I just saw in that that there's repentance, there's baptism, and there's being filled with the Holy Spirit and this deep transformative power that comes from the gospel. I can't conjure it up. I can't manufacture it. I just need to trust in the story of the gospel that what Jesus did was the most powerful, most beautiful thing to ever happen And that there's aspects of that, that when we're faithful to speak it, when we're faithful to put it out in front of uh, the lost, there's this aspect that in a moment can transform somebody. Sometimes we take people through and we think, man, through all this discipleship, through this and that, I don't negate discipleship, but we think of this process of going from, from a point of salvation to a point of really being repentant and transforming and changing from sin to following Jesus, to coming to the point even of deciding to be baptized. And and even that, that baptism is just kind of this outward expression of something inwardly. I have learned that it's even more deeper and more transformative and more powerful than that. What a beautiful, beautiful necessity. There's so much depth in it. Um, but we separate these things out so much. And here's Peter going, what do you need to do today? You need to do these three things. They are the open door. They are the first thing. They are the aspect to lay the foundation for a transformed life. And that end result being filled with the Holy Spirit, receiving him so that, so that each person can walk out a mature life. We don't have to wait 10 years, 15 years, and go through a huge struggle to be able to receive the Holy Spirit. These things are the foundation stones so that as we continue to live sanctification and building of character and freedom and just a life in Christ can be possible at actually a much quicker rate. So my heart's just alive. I'm so excited to just have a simple faith in the power of the gospel, that that spoken word, that that example of Christ in me um, can bring salvation can bring transformation can bring newness in a person's life in a moment and so i'm excited to share with you in the in in the next segment just some simple revelations about the power of the gospel and to be able to set our trust and our faith in jesus christ and his message through that gospel